okay guys, just like I said, you gotta be flexible and expect the unexpected when you go to do these kinds of things. And I gotta tell you, there was about 4% of me that thought, you know, maybe it wasn't actually the radio, maybe it was something beside the radio itself. And it turns out that's true. Got my radio plugged in just to double check it and make sure it was gonna function the way that I needed to function before I got it all mounted ABC. And it turns out that nothing happened when I pressed the power button. So that tells me there's something wrong with either the wiring harness or something else that at this point in time, I just can't figure out in the bike myself. What's up riders? Welcome back to the channel. I'm the two wheel teacher. And today I'm gonna to be giving you my two week review of the Aquatic MP5BTH, one of the most popular replacement radios for pre 2014 Harley Davidson touring bikes. Let's do it. So as you've probably seen previously, I attempted to install and begin running this radio in my 2013 Street Glide a couple of weeks ago, but I hit a snag when power was still not getting to the head unit. If you missed that, you can click here to check out that uh, install video to see how the install went up onto getting the actual power to my radio. So at the time I figured it was just a wiring harness issue as I had replaced virtually every fuse that there was in my fuse box. I fiddled around with anything that plugged into the head unit. I played with the wiring harness to see if it was just a pinched wire. Did everything that I could think of, everything that the parts guy at the Tallahassee Harley Davidson shop recommended that I do when I called to explain my issue. And despite my efforts, I was not able to get that radio working, uh, but it wasn't a big deal because I did have an appointment in the service shop at my Harley Davidson dealership to get my clutch switch sensor replaced. So when I brought the bike in, told them about the radio issue and it ended up being one of those two birds, one stone sort of situation. So when they called me a couple hours later, they let me know that um, the radio was installed and working and that I also needed to get my prescription checked out for my glasses because the issue was just a blown fuse. So two thoughts on the fact that it was just a blown fuse. So number one, I'm like super happy that it was just a blown fuse, right? Those are cheap to replace. Those are not something that I'm gonna shell out hundreds of dollars to get fixed. So cool, just a blown fuse. But number two, I literally sat on my garage floor with a tweezer in my hand, pulling out every fuse, putting in a new fuse. I did it for every 15 amp relay that goes through that fuse box and it didn't matter because I still apparently don't understand how to change or check fuses. But it doesn't matter because my radio is in, it worked, it has worked for two weeks. I've been riding basically every day, listening to it, trying to figure out what I actually think of this radio. And so here are my thoughts. Okay, so first off, the install itself is really, really easy. I think a lot of not a lot, but I, I, I know I've read stories about people being a little wary of actually getting into their fairing to do any of this sort of work, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if you need to replace the head unit on your bike, it's really not, it's not a big deal when it comes to the install. I needed two tools, right? So I had my, my wrench with a T27 bit to actually get the fairing off, and, and that's one of the more common bits that you're gonna find used um, in parts in on your Harley and then I just needed the right size Allen wrench to actually get the mounting screws off of the mounting bracket for the radio and then that was it that's sort of literally all the tools that I needed to do the install itself so as far as install goes it's a pretty easy process right take off your outer fairing unplug your radio should only have one or two plugs depending on what model you're actually running for your audio setup you unplug it you take out four Allen screws pull out your head unit put in your new head unit plug it in, make sure everything works, make sure all your fuses are not blown, and then put in four, put, put the four Allen screws back in, get it mounted, close up the fairing, you're good to go. So the install on this unit is really, really smooth. And I would imagine that for most units, it's gonna be pretty smooth. So that's what's nice. Um, let's talk about functionality, which overall is really, really, really great. Um, setting up the Bluetooth to my phone was really easy, maybe took a minute. Um, Every time I power up the bike and I've got my phone with me, um, the Bluetooth will link up just like that. There's really no latency. I don't have to go in and tell my phone to, to hook up to the Bluetooth. I don't have to mess with the radio. It just, it, they remember each other. It links up right away, which is really nice. Um, 
I have encountered some Bluetooth interference, and this is something that took me by surprise because I didn't expect it and hadn't experienced it before with other devices, but it's, and it's only happened two or three times, but here's what happens. I'll be riding along, listening to whatever it is that I'm listening to, and maybe I'll pass through a certain part of town. Maybe it's a certain corner of my neighborhood, um, and I've, I've had it where I was close to a dump truck. I know this just sounds really weird, but I pulled up next to a dump truck and maybe had nothing to do with a dump truck, but I pulled up next to the dump truck and all of a sudden my radio was just cutting out every, I don't know, every second, every couple seconds. And it was just some radio interference. But as soon as I pulled away and got away from that dump truck, it, it cleared up. So that is to be expected when you're working with a wireless connection sort of situation. But eh, that's really my only complaint at this point. Um, the unit is pretty easy to figure out as far as navigating the menus and getting the clock set up and turning off the button beep, which was the number one complaint that I saw on Amazon where, was that people were complaining about the fact that every time you hit a button, it beeps, which it does when you get it going, but that's the default factory setting. It'll ask you when you go through the settings for the setup, if you wanna turn off the beep, which you're gonna to wanna to turn off the beep because you don't wanna to have to hear it every time you adjust the volume. So um, that's not actually a big issue. And the whole thing is, is really easy to figure out. Um, I didn't even use the, the quick start guide or the user manual. Um, I'm gonna keep them around. I've, I've stored mine on my, what I call the motorcycle rack in our garage, which is where, which is where I keep all my bike stuff and tools. So I'm gonna keep the user manual around just in case I do run into issues in the future. But um, as far as getting set up, it's pretty intuitive on its own, which is great. Um, it, it, these are purpose built to go into Harley Davidson. So all of my hand controls work, whether it's volume, next, play pause, that sort of thing. Um, all of that works with the hand controls on the handlebars, which is great. The one function that you do lose by replacing the stock unit with this particular unit is that you don't get the automatic volume control, which is a nice feature of the stock head unit itself, which if you, if you don't have yours turned on, all it does is when you, when your bike senses that it's going faster, it assumes that there's wind noise and, and motor noise. So it turns up the volume. And as you, as you slow down and come to a stop, it'll actually turn down the volume. So it's just a, it's just a little bit of an automated feature that ensures you've got volume comfort, um, regardless of the speed that you're going at. So that's functionality. So now let's talk about sound quality and the experience of, of riding with this actual radio. I won't be able to actually show you any sound clips of sound quality for two reasons. Number one, anything that I would play would get me a copyright strike and then I could punch I could potentially lose all the audio on this whole video, which obviously I don't want. And number two, um, audio quality coming out of the speakers through my microphone, being processed, then being put into a video editor and then being uploaded to YouTube and then being played through your speakers. You're not gonna be able to experience the sound quality as I'm experiencing it when I am on the bike and listening to the radio. Um, but I have sort of been an audiophile my whole life given my heavy involvement with music and live performance and that sort of thing so i have a pretty decent judge of, of audio quality so so here are my thoughts on on the radio head unit itself so um sound quality is comparable and i would say probably maybe like eight to ten percent better just as far as overall quality goes for for the audio that i'm getting out of this head unit compared relative to this stock head unit itself um and so Frequency response is a little bit wider. And all I mean by that is that the, the highs coming out of my radio now are a little clearer and I can tell that it wants to put out more bass. Um, it's not achieving much more bass because I still have the stock speakers in my fairing and I really only have the two fairing speakers in my bike right now. Um, the next thing that I would do is I would replace the fairing speakers and then I would maybe depending on what those speakers were add an amp um, I do have plans in the future to put lower fairings on my street glide and put some speaker pods in there so I could have a four speaker setup which would be cool um, but as far as my setup as it as it's functioning right now I've got increased frequency response but my, my speakers are what's holding back the actual quality of the experience now that's not a big deal to me because um, I'm not in a position where I need to have perfect, awesome, really loud audio coming off my bike. I just listen to music while I ride. Um, and most of the time, you know, my riding is not going to last more than about 25 to, to 30 minutes. So it's not, it's not really a huge issue for me. Um, and by the time I'm on the interstate where I might be doing really long rides and listening to music for a while, I can't really hear it. You know, I've got earplugs in for wind noise and I've got a helmet on. And if I'm 
doing interstate speeds, I'm not really gonna be able to hear much of the radio the way it is set up right now anyway. So um, that's really sort of the, the overall audio quality idea. It is better. It's, it's certainly not a downgrade, which is nice. The other thing that I do really like too, relative to the stock head unit, is the fact that the volume increments are packed in much closer. So I would find on my stock head unit that maybe like seven bars of volume was just a little too quiet, but eight bars of volume was almost a little bit too loud. I mean, there really was no, there really was no middle ground finding a level that was loud enough, but still comfortable at different speeds. What's nice about the aquatics head unit is that I, I've only gotten it up to 30, but I think maybe it goes to 40 or 50 um, as far as volume output goes. And so you've got a lot of nuance built in there to figure out, okay, is it 23 or is it 25 or is it 21 as far as what the best volume level is going to be for, for, again, both volume level and comfort level as you're riding along. So that's where I'm at. Um, overall, I'm really, really psyched about my purchase and it's definitely a radio that I would recommend to anybody else that's looking to replace their stock head unit in a pre-2014 touring bike. Um, I will definitely have more updates on my experience as I go along with this aquatics radio. I've only had it in for two weeks, but I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the install process and, and the issues that I ran into, but also just some, you know, just a quick two week review on, on how I actually feel about running this head unit in my bike. Um, if you like what you see on my channel, and there's a lot more to this channel than just one radio review, so be sure to check out my other videos. Um, but also be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, if I have yet to hit 250 subscribers, hitting that subscribe button now will automatically enter you and your username into a drawing to win a $100 gift card to harleydavidson.com. So if you're interested in that and want to do a little bit of shopping, make sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm the Two Wheel Teacher, and I'll see you on the road.